Good morning, folks. Nice looking meteor went through the sky Sunday night. Videos trickled in yesterday. It's one of the better green light producing boloids captured on camera this year. Sightings mostly in from the Midwest. Today we're watching for intensified solar wind, looking at major weather news, some news on earthquakes, extraterrestrials, and ancient Mars. Let's get right to it over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours on our star exceedingly calm once more. Corona hold departing, bright group incoming near the equator, although it hasn't organized into solid sunspots just yet, babies playing on stage, and thus, no major solar flare events. Solar wind is generally calming after more hours of reverberation and unsteady streams. It causes instability here and there, but we also just dropped to KP1 for the first time in days. Likely won't last too long, however. The solar wind from the departing corona hole could reach Earth tonight, possibly tomorrow, and could produce geomagnetic storms up to level 2 if it matches its previous stream speed. We had quakes in India and Colombia, but the top news under our feet was a mud volcano eruption in line between the seismic upticks in Turkey and Turkmenistan. The show's been beneath the crust for 16 days now. Not that there isn't news up here. The Afghanistan snow story from days ago is getting worse and worse. Too much, homes collapsing, no way to keep warm. This is a very bad situation. We've got one of those coming to the U.S. tonight as well, but I'm just not sure which Earth spot will be worse. Severe weather, including tornado threat, returns to the Gulf states, while feet of snow and flash flooding rains hit the west. Eyes open, folks. Other top alert is for northwest Australia and the convergence storm line trailing southward towards Antarctica. Anywhere along there could be a very rough go. Top news today includes a study of Chinese pre-seismic signals. They declare forecasting to be possible. No kidding. But they say they are miles and miles from the finish line. Keep going. Up next, one of the coolest papers I've enjoyed reading in a while. We don't cover UFOs or ET stuff very much because I have no idea what I'm talking about with avionics, but the astrobiology is right up my alley, and folks, they are saying that many of the planets where we've determined there isn't life, we could be very, very wrong. As planets, especially like Earth, probably encrypt their signatures of life in the oceans. Hope you caught that. Up next... Ancient Mars continues to prove a struggle for NASA. According to their models, the water was there in droves, but how could it stay liquid on the surface? They say it was too cold. Possibly, or possibly the sun wasn't so weak in the past as they thought, or perhaps simply, the planets were not always sitting where they are today. In fact, that ancient story is precisely what mainstream says has happened in the past, just tens of millions of years ago, and the stories from our ancestors claiming to watch it happen we're all just fantasy and a lucky coincidence to be so similar. Well, if you'd like an alternative explanation, head over to suspiciousobservers.org and click Premium Preview. It's got deeper looks, fly-on-the-wall episodes, series videos, and conference talks from Pittsburgh, including A Planet Crossed, a breakdown of chaos in the early solar system, and what might have really happened with a crossing planet. Folks, please enjoy that preview page. Membership is only $4 per month, and your memberships here support all the free resources. Space Weather News, EarthChanges.org, QuakeWatch.net, The Pole Flip at MagneticReversal.org, and we greatly appreciate your support. We've got the other areas of the world on the wind map, Null School Run, up through the atmosphere, and shots of our star to close. It's 4.45 a.m. in the New Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.